Hi everyone, this is Ronak from AgarwalRonak.com. Welcome to another podcast. Uh, today we'll be uh, reviewing uh, Call Root solution, and I'll be showing you a demo of the Call Root platform. Uh, I have I have a test tenant uh, on which I have created this video. Hi everyone, this is Ronak from MagarwalRonak.com. Uh, today I'm planning to uh, showcase a demo of the call root solution and what it can do, what are the different features, you'll get to see the look and feel of it. Uh, please note this is not a sponsored video and the views are personal. Uh, to the makers of the solution, I'm trying to cover this platform based on my experience. If there is anything important you think I've missed out or you may want to highlight it, please feel free to do to please. Uh, Feel free to do it uh, once the podcast is live. Um, and, and just to the listeners, it is very important to keep the product documentation handy. Um, Call, Call Root has a, a very good uh, documentation that they maintain. And I will attach the link in the description. So let's begin. Uh, now, why, why Call Root? Why, why are we discussing this topic? And, and why do you even think about Call Root? So if you and your organization are one of those who have a unified communication, a heterogeneous environment, a mix of different PBXs, cloud, on-prem, Cisco call manager, Microsoft Teams, and you want to manage them into one um, uh, cloud-based platform. Uh, second reason is if you use Microsoft Teams as your primary platform or are looking to move to Microsoft Teams. Uh, third is uh, if you're using multiple carriers globally, and you're looking to consolidate them in one platform, which is a cloud-based platform. Fourth, uh, if you want to define your unified communication services uh, based on your personas, uh, personas in your organization, uh, and want to auto-provision. Uh, fifth, you want to automate uh, MACD, especially automate user provisioning in Microsoft Teams. Then call root is the perfect tool for you to use. Uh, call root, um, uh, solution is available in five regions today, North America, uh, South America, uh, Europe, Asia, and Australia. And obviously they are growing. Um, they, can, uh, they can get connected to any carrier anywhere uh, and connects with the Microsoft Teams and other PBXs uh, seamlessly. Um, and, and again, the benefit uh, here is that it can help you automate provisioning and make these on Microsoft Teams and they have a 24 seven support available. Now, what is call, call route? Um, and, and you would see the image. Uh, call route is basically made up of three uh, solutions built into one cloud platform. One is connectivity, where you can bring any of your carrier globally into one cloud platform and manage them from there. Uh, you can integrate your PBXs, Microsoft Teams, contact center as a service, any SIP device into one cloud portal and manage them and automate and manage your call routing, uh, auto provisioning, management of phone numbers, and every all that I said is built into one cloud platform where you can do all of it. So this is Call Route. So, and and recently Call Route uh, launched its new branding called Auto, which basically is the auto provisioning uh, part in Microsoft Teams. Uh, and just to give a brief on Auto, Auto is a friendly face uh, to personify the Microsoft Teams automated provisioning solution. Uh, it highlights the automation and productivity gains for the businesses. Uh, th this sits alongside your, you know, uh, call routes, voice offerings, which is carrier management and, and all those built into one single portal. Um, as far as the call route features are concerned, you, you get a good reporting, which I will show in the demo. Uh, you can manage your emergency calling from here. Um, uh, you, this becomes your routing engine across different carriers, across different uh, services like Microsoft Teams call manager. You can manage all the numbers in, in call route. It is a resilient solution um, on AWS. And there is an admin portal where you can manage your RBAC uh, access and who gets what level of access uh, and, and so on. Uh, and, and again, all that I'm saying will be shown in the demo, but you'll see flashes of images on of the admin pages of, of different uh, pieces built into one. Now, why do you, so we have spoken about, you know, what is call root solution? Um, why should you choose and what are the, uh, primary benefits of choosing now now i will be covering the benefits of call route um because i sp i've spoken about the use cases that it supports um 
but but basically call route helps you in solving three problems one is connecting with your existing carriers globally integrating microsoft teams with your existing phone systems uh, sorry integrating microsoft teams with call route and uh, managing your microsoft teams users and provisioning so these are the three kind of problems it solves the benefits, uh, obviously, this is as claimed by the call root company, uh, are uh, you can save up to 77% of uh, user management costs because of auto provisioning and other, other things. Um, and then uh, there is another benefit uh, uh, in terms of uh, provisioning accuracy. So there is a 98% to 100% increase in first time provisioning accuracy because you're automating the provisioning, so there is less human errors and, and, the, and the results are accurate. You're not managing PowerShell scripts and, and sorts of those things. The third benefit that is claimed is 90% uh, faster than manual process because it is automated. And I, as I'll show you in the demo, you'll see why they say 90% faster because you can pretty much automate license groups, teams groups, um, persona creation, which includes your policy assignation to all the users. Uh, based on the different personas they have, so it is much more faster in terms of uh, in terms of provisioning. Uh, now let's look at the product demo itself. I'll take you through the product now. Today let's look at the call route um, solution. Look at the demo of it and do a deep dive of the solution. So when you log in uh, to their website as an admin and you have to go to callroute.io. And you log in with your credentials, this is the home page you would see. Uh, so you see a very clean dashboard. Uh, it will show you the last seven days activity as far as total calls are concerned, any average duration, successful and successful calls. Then what are the different uh, services you have with the call route solution? So what are the different kind of carriers you can add globally? What are the different services you can connect? Like for example, Microsoft Teams, WebEx Calling, PBX, any other PBX. Uh, what are the different kind of phone numbers you're managing irrespective of the carrier or the location and uh, the different monitoring and the reporting capabilities that call route has which um, helps in getting weekly monthly depending on your uh, requirements uh, the reporting data uh, then there is an admin panel which basically helps uh, in uh, giving roles to other users, our back roles to other users, configuring security or other administrative user roles. And then obviously some documentation on call, ro call route on uh, the product itself, release notes and any feedback you would like to give. So it's a very sleek uh, dashboard that that is there as you log in uh, to it. There are a number of options. There is a help option. There is a multi, you can enable multi-factor authentication. Uh, you can check what all tasks are running any notifications that the solution or the platform is generating will, will show here and uh, the user ID that you're logged in with and the tenant and uh, that information is displayed here. On the left hand side, you have the, the uh, kind of navigation on. So this is the overview page where you can go to carriers to configure your carriers. Uh, to configure your services, you can go to services to configure your numbers for number management and number assignation removal and, and all those things. You can go here for reporting. You can click and wheel anyways, uh, click on each of them uh, later in this demo to show how they look and what all data they have. Uh, uh, and, and again, before we get into details of this, this is a demo tenant. So you'll not see a lot of data here as far as calls are concerned. Uh, so, and, and I've only integrated Microsoft Teams with call route. So you will not see a lot of features, but I just want you to see what capabilities the solution has so that you can experience it and call route offers a trial as well. So you can integrate your PBXs, Microsoft Teams and other PBXs and carriers and experience it yourself. Uh, so this should give you a good idea on that. Now, let's see. Now this was the overview. Um, now let's go into carriers. So in, as, as I said, this is a demo tenant. So I, I have a SIP Synergy, which is whose product is this um, as the carrier for me, as of now that is configured for me. Um, um, and uh, on this carrier page where you are integrating, so you see two options here. One is connect your SVCs or the gateways, voice gateways. 
and connect your carrier. So it's pretty easy to uh, click any one of them and just add your SBC or carrier. So if I'm looking to add my SBCs, and I'm sure you know what SBC is, uh, helps you route the calls to PSTN. So it will, you so whatever uh, uh, name you want to label it, you can label it. <clears throat> Give the signaling protocol as a TLS, UDP. Usually it'll be UDP, but for security you might have TLS. Uh, give the IP address or the FQDN of the SBC signaling port, uh, 5060 or 5061. And if you have a SIP, SIP IP range, you can't, you put that and add your SBC. This will connect your call route to SBC. Obviously, you might have to do some config on the SBC, but at least from call route side, your configuration towards SBC will be complete. So simple to add. Then if I want to connect a carrier, so it could be any carrier. So today, um, there are a number of carriers that call route has already have engagements with like six degrees or BT or Gamma UK. And, and there are so many carriers that call route already is working. So you just have to click on connect and just put the, um, you know, you just label the, the carrier name could be anything as per your company's uh, naming convention and just add the carrier. They should automatically add the carrier for you. Now, obviously you'll have to configure it. So there are certain settings that needs to be added for the configuration and uh, and also um, for because it's a pre-configured carrier on call route so not a lot of things you have to do on your side usually you would provide the information that you see things like uh, the server ip address or the media address port on which call route will accept the calls all this information copy or download as a file and share it with the carrier so they will configure this on their side and start routing your calls through call, call route solution so it's a good centralized system uh, where you can configure all the different carriers and uh, and uh, and consolidate your carriers across the globe into one cloud platform that helps you route the you know which will help you route the which will help you manage your dial plan you know the the way you want to route the calls to carriers centralized monitoring all of that so So that is that. Uh, so I've just simply configured a carrier. It is active. Obviously, it is not active because you'll have to pass the configuration information to the carrier themselves. But it's pretty simple to configure a carrier. Uh, there are lists. There are a lot of carriers which are coming soon. So I'm sure Call Route is working with them in the back end to set up uh, a native connect uh, with carriers like B uh, BT Ireland, Call, Bandwidth, at and uh, Pure IP, T-Mobile, Verizon, Vodafone, some big, some big names there, which are present globally. So I'm sure this will definitely boost how call route is doing business with the carriers and also help uh, various customers of various sizes manage the different carriers globally through one cloud platform, which is called route. So that's pretty amazing, very simple to configure. Now, um, now let's so this is one side of call route where you can configure the connectivity of the carriers now when um, you have configured one side towards the carriers it uh, as call route is acting as a centralized engine for routing calls you need to configure um, and integrate your pbxs like uh, uh, it could be on prem pbxs or microsoft teams cloud solution with call route so i here i have configured uh, Microsoft Teams are integrated Microsoft Teams with call route. The connection is active, stable, it's healthy. The service status of Teams is healthy. And uh, and this is the integration I, I have done. There are uh, various um, uh, other integrations that you could do, as you can see in the, in the demo. Uh, you can integrate your WebEx calling tenant. You can integrate your on-prem call manager, Avaya, Mitel. You can have 3CX, uh, PBX integrated with call route have the anywhere 365 contact center uh, integrated uh, and any generic PBX you can connect with call route. Uh, you could uh, um, add a SIP phone in call route for management. So there is basic things. Obviously you would want to add this kind of information could be a line number, username, password, because this is where call route will go to WebEx and authenticate itself. Obviously you'll have to do this configuration in WebEx. Similarly, for call manager, you would need to provide this information, gateway IP, gateway protocol, and, and all that. Um, again, it's, it's easy to connect. It's, um, 
you know, if you have the information, it will hardly take few minutes for you to configure and connect your PBXs with call roof and, and you should be up and up and running. Now, if I just talk about my connection that I have, so obviously I have some users uh, on Microsoft Teams tenant, obviously in Azure AD, with, through which I'm syncing uh, the users here. Um, but it is just showing that uh, what was when was the last sync happened between call root and Microsoft Teams, how, how um, um, the, the minutes that you see, so 33 minutes ago, uh, there was uh, the sync that happened, the connection is active, I can configure users, check the service help, I can delete the configuration, delete the integration. When was the, when was the integration done? Uh, when was it updated, last sync? All this information you can see here, you can create a label. So it is showing you that, uh, at least in my tenant, that uh, everything is working fine as expected as far as connection to Teams is concerned from call route. And, and obviously I'll show you more use cases right now to give you a sense as to why this integration is even needed. Now, that that that's pretty much it in terms of uh, the services that it can integrate with. Now, a uh, very important and uh, unique feature of this solution is the number ranges. So you could have, uh, obviously I have a demo tenant, so I have only one number, the UK number assigned from SIP Synergy, the carrier that is integrated here. And, uh, but, but in your case, in your organization's uh, case, you could have multiple carriers across the globe. You could be using Microsoft Teams calling plans, operator connect, you could have a direct routing with different carriers and there could be multiple scenarios like that. And you could end up having multiple carriers uh, providing you different uh, number ranges and, and so on. So what you do is, uh, you know, if you add the carriers, it will all come, if you add the carriers in the carriers tab here, uh, it will uh, all sync, but you can uh, add a ranges manually as well. So you can enter the first number, the total number of numbers in that range. Who is your carrier? Is it a, your own carrier? Or is it a Microsoft Direct Routing? Put the operator's uh, label name. You could put a carrier name, create a tag, and just create the tag. So basically, all the phone numbers that have that you have been managing over Excel or some manual way of Man, in, a, in a manual shape or wherever, everything can be centralized here. So number assignation, number removal, all those things can be easily managed and, and it can be automated. And there is no need for spreadsheets to be maintained again. You could sync number. So all, I mean, obviously I don't have numbers. It's a, it's a demo tenant. I don't have integrations everywhere. I don't even have calling plans and all that, but it's just showing you the different uh, categories of how numbers will be shown and it'll all synced into one. So I could have a direct routing. I could add the range as I was showing you. Um, if if I'm integrated with Microsoft Teams and if I'm using Operator Connect, uh, my numbers will sync here automatically because but right now I don't think I have the numbers, so it will not show, but it will show you the task has started. I can click to see the progress. It would show you the different steps. So it is syncing numbers right now. I don't think it will get any, but for in fact, it, I think it got two numbers. But anyways, it's, it's uh, let's just wait for maybe a few minutes and see if something changes, but I'll just start the sync process. And uh, if if I have any numbers that it will automatically come here, any numbers uh, that are coming through my carriers, which are integrated into call route automatically will show here and so on. So it's a very, uh, it's, it's this place where you can manage all your phone numbers and uh, uh, and this centralized management of phone numbers helps you in uh, keeping a track of the numbers, DIDs, what are being used, what are not being used, and and, and the other things. And and you can uh, and I'll show you how you can assign this to the users in a minute. But this is where all the numbers will be shown. And last, uh, not the least, is the reporting. So as I was explaining earlier, you could uh, so on this dashboard there are a number of reports that are generated. These are all graphical reports, so it's easy to read. So you have the daily, weekly, monthly calls, the total number of calls, outbound, inbound, total call minutes, top, top 10 numbers that were dialed, peak channel usage, uh, usage by location, top 10 call numbers, top 10 call locations, log calls. So, and you can click, um, again, I don't have data, but you could click on view details and you'll, you'll get more data around this. And you can select your uh, duration and you can filter by source. So it is Basically, if you want to look at a certain call detail record CDR, you can come here and take a look at it. If you want more details, 
you could identify spam calls or you could see that there are incoming calls with from an unknown number from an unknown region and helps you track um, and flag those kind of calls as well and but but it's a good good place to um, go and look at reports and I can export the reports as CSV as well and the feature. So that's about it in terms of the different dashboards and configuration items uh, the solution has. There is a obviously help page, uh, very handy to keep the product guide because features are being added regularly and you would want to know, you know, at least uh, on how to manage the product. Then there is an admin page. Uh, so, <clears throat> so in this uh, in this admin dashboard, uh, you could find your company details. Um, I mean, obviously, this is uh, the details that I have here. I can change it. Yeah, it. It will list all the users. So my name is active here as a sub super user. I can have a number tag. I can configure multi-factor authentication uh, here under security access control. So I could, uh, there are a number of uh, RBAC roles built into the system. So I am the super admin or super user here, but you could, a compliance engineer could be assigned a compliance manager role. Um, report analyst could be just given report analyst uh, role and, and so on. So there are a number of roles. I can create my own role as well based on the different uh, scope I give to that user. But so it's a pretty neat feature in managing the access control and uh, uh, and obviously this configuration is 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 the backend which uh, call root product team manages and they configure. Um, so so this is a quick quick overview of uh, the different dashboard, the different features it has. Uh, now we will uh, do a quick um, dive into the services and what all you can do there. So this is where. Uh, the services are configured. In my case, uh, Microsoft Teams is integrated with uh, with Call Root. So I will show you the different uh, features. Uh, and and again, to, just to keep in mind, uh, uh, Call Root uh, is a very Teams friendly solution. So if you have Microsoft Teams being used or you are planning to use Microsoft Teams, uh, you know this is the solution to go for as far as some of these automation use cases are concerned. Uh, so in this case, like I was explaining, I have uh, Microsoft Teams. Now, if I click, uh, if I click here and go to the configuration, so there are at the top. If you see, you know the showing the Teams uh, uh, status, health status is healthy. So the connection is healthy. The Teams tenant is healthy. Uh, there are a number of features that uh, I would want you to look at right now that you can configure. This is these are the use cases that. Uh, that you have in call root that can be automated within Microsoft Teams. So first of all, uh, uh, you see users. So when you sync your Microsoft Teams tenant with uh, with call root, uh, all your users uh, sync here. Now you can set up the Teams settings. So you can either sync only the voice Teams users, or you could sync all your Teams users, or you could sync all your Azure AD users. It depends on how you want to configure right now i have set to teams voice users so anybody having a voice license will be synced here if they don't then it would sync but it would say is show inactive voice as a status um if you're missing a user you can just put the email address and it will try and fetch that user from azure ad um, and you can sync uh, manually auto sync um, sync the users but it will automatically sync as well and it will show you the expected next next sync in about is in about 20 minutes from now so this is the place where you see all the users. If I, you know, if you scroll down, there are about forty-two users that are being added here, um, and uh, and then and, and obviously I, I have very limited users, but an organization could have five hundred thousand, ten thousand, fifty thousand, depending on uh, on the on the employees they have. Um, so it is very important that um, that call route has factored this, and they have created user personas. So user persona is is um, is basically so in your organization you could have few people in IT you could have few people in HR, finance and there are there could be different user personas based on your industry based on the company that you are and how you're running your your organization but so you can basically create those user personas so it's um, it's um, it's very easy I just created a couple of personas you get this default persona that is there by default but 
you could create your own persona so you know i could uh, i could name uh, i could name hr persona for example and it's showing showing that the persona name is available this is the user persona for hr employees and i can create it now so basically when you create a persona uh, you assign certain policies to that persona so if 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 let's say uh, if i am the hr you know i join in to this company uh, and if i am assigned to this persona automatically all the microsoft teams policies are assigned to me so this is the template you create for hr persona so you know just to uh, make some changes i could say you know i could assign some global policies here to some of the settings here under voice policy i could say and obviously if my tenant only has global policy right now if i create you know different policies i can just come here and assign it so i've just assigned a couple of policies um and i can save and update so what it would do it do is it would automatically create that persona with, with those particular uh, policies and i could also give a number range so if i know that if i have if let's say this is the number i want to give i can select the number and i can save an update so if i have a range then then obviously you know this persona when i assign a user in this persona i've already defined the set of numbers for this persona so if i assign a user to this persona they will automatically get a number from that range automatically get the policies so it's a pretty handy tool because when you're uh, onboarding offboarding bulk users you just come here and assign and uh, run the operation once all you know all and all the users are automatically updated and uh, so it's a pretty neat feature that uh, call root has based on persona rather than based on user um, i can also migrate uh, my pers one persona to the other persona so i could say you know uh, if let's say there are some users in in this podcast on this uh, podcaster persona but i want that user to now move to hr because they have changed their departments so i can easily click and this will automatically change that user all the users from one person move the users from one persona to the other persona and take all the newer settings so this is pretty much important i believe uh, at least this is very unique in terms of what um, what this use case is uh, it could uh, you know automate a lot of configuration related things and, uh, and and if tomorrow if there is a user who is not in maybe not in the is not he doesn't have certain policies he complains he opens up a ticket you could come here and just assign that user to this person if they are not assigned so it's a pretty handy tool as far as persona and a lot of things that you can do here um in in summary in user personas you can assign voice policies collaboration policies mobile policies compliance policies um, meetings and events policies uh, diagnostics and and you can assign a phone number here um now next is license groups uh, so license groups uh, they allow you uh, as an admin obviously to create uh, microsoft 365 license bundles to assign to your users via call root so when you have a persona defined if let's say the user needs to be enterprise voice enabled they need certain kind of licenses so you could come here and and i, I obviously I, I i don't have it because i don't have this kind of lot of licenses available on my side but you can come here and assign those licenses here and uh, i don't think it will create anything but license group yeah because i don't have any uh, licenses available but you could see all the license groups here you can create a group and assign those licenses to the particular set of users and uh, that eases, eases your process in terms of how and what license is assigned to which user you can come and see it helps you optimize your license cost understand your capacity and, and so on uh, then you have uh, the team groups uh, so uh, again a very unique uh, feature um, so team groups it allows you to group together all teams that a department or a group of users may need access to so what this means is if uh, let's say again i take my example again i joined this company as an hr assistant and uh, there are teams already created for hr so as an hr i need to be part of let's say 10 different teams could be with my manager could be with my team could be with uh, uh someone uh, some other team uh, finance or whatever 
So when I create team group, I will add those teams here. And when I do that and I assign that user to this team group, he's auto, he or she is automatically added to those teams. So it's very convenient because if I am joining a company, I would want uh, to understand who is doing what, which department, uh, you know, who, you know who to talk to, who to reach out to. So if I'm automatically added into different groups, um, it helps me um, start my journey quickly and understand what is my role and, and there are other things that you could do. Today, what the challenge we have is there are so many teams created. Everybody creates a team, but there is no standardization. This will help in that standardization and will help uh, in uh, help employees in understanding which groups they need to be part of uh, and which groups they, they are optional. And so you could obviously add, this is the demo tenant, but I don't have many teams, but, but this is where you define those um, and assign to the user. So as a, as a user, they will be added to these teams. Um, now, next is uh, uh, call queue groups, uh, which is uh, this one. So call queue groups, uh, it allows you to group together all teams call queues that a department or group of users may need access to and bundles to, and obviously you assign this to the user. So if I'm a user, I need to be part of a certain call queue. This So if I know that if I create a call queue group and uh, if I create a call queue group and uh, and I know that this particular user needs to be part of this call queue group, I will assign this call queue group to the user. So it is very easy to manage. And if tomorrow that user moves to another department and I need to assign another user, I can just come here quickly and change the configuration and automatically everything will be updated. Very handy feature when you have multiple call queue groups uh, uh, configured. Now auto provisioning. Uh, so obviously this is the uh, automation that you could uh, create. So I spoke about uh, uh, license groups, user personas, team groups, call queue groups. So now if I am provisioning a user, so I could say, uh, you know, I'll just put uh, put my name and, or, or let's see, um, that's the automation. And this is uh, UK, no. Test. Now, I, I mean, obviously, if I click on save, it will save this uh, automation for me, but that's okay. I'm not getting saved because I think there is some problem with the user location, but that's fine. But what, what's important to note is uh, you could, now, if I, if I want to auto-provision a user, that means I need to automatically assign it to a user persona, automatically give the license group, automatically assign the teams group or call queue group. I can come here, yes, create an automation. I can name the automation, whatever it is. Uh, could be, let's say, an HR automation, right? HR auto provisioning. So if a new HR joins, I need to auto provision uh, that user. So I can come here, I can configure it. So if any new HR joins, you know, I, I, I'll just, obviously I don't have some things created, but you can select, uh, click on the drop down and select your license group, click, click on your persona. You can click the persona, click on the team group. You can select the team group that you have created, which has all the teams. You can, if they are part of a call queue, select the call queue and then just save it. So what it would do is it would create that automation for you. So next time when you provision a user, you just have to come here and, and do the automation. It would automatically um, configure all of the settings for that particular user. So, and, and obviously, um, we are pulling and, I, and, and, and you must be thinking where are the users coming from? Obviously we are pulling from Azure AD, depending on the team settings. Um, it will look at the user and it would go from there and then or, or assign that user. And I can do it manually as well. I can come to any user and I can go to user and assign the license group, assign the persona like this. And I would get all the settings. I can, you know, select all these manually or I can quickly um, go to auto provisioning and create an automation here. 
So now uh, we create a new automation. In this uh, new automation, let's say um, I want to configure all users in a certain location to take um, a certain settings. It could be Teams group, uh, Persona, or a license group or call queue. So I can, let's say if, if the users, and I can name it anything, let's say HR automation. And uh, let's say um, UK. So now I need to add the condition. So for any new user coming in, I need to I need to assign the correct uh, policies and correct license groups and all that. So I could I could add a condition say that if uh, and these are all Azure AD attributes. So if I don't know if let's say they use office office location uh, parameters. If office location uh, contains let's say United Kingdom, then assign. I mean, obviously, I don't have license group, but assign this particular license group, assign HR persona, assign this particular teams group, assign this particular call queue if there is, then save it. So what it would do is anytime you sync a new user or any user configuration is updated, uh, uh, and if, in, if in the update, you're updating this particular uh, parameter, office location, and if it contains United Kingdom, or you know, you can set it based on your organization, um, configuration but then automatically assign that user all these things call queue group teams group so it's it's very convenient i could uh sync hundreds of users if it's a large organization where uh, you know few hundreds uh, uh, come to organization every month or every few months and few hundreds leave the company i don't have to go to teams and somewhere else to manually configure all their settings here i can just it would and i don't even have to do anything it if it meet, meets this condition, it would automatically configure all that. So any new user coming from Azure AD with this particular identity, or in this case, office location is equal to United Kingdom, it would automatically get everything. They would get license, they would get teams groups, they are already added into the relevant teams. If they are part of call queue, they are already added to the call queue groups. Uh, the correct user persona is added, so the correct uh, uh, teams policies are added, and I don't have to do anything. So it's a pretty easy way to assign um, uh, everything to a user on Microsoft Teams without doing much. And any tasks that are running, you can see here. So you know, if you're as an admin, if you're monitoring this, you would know what kind of activities are happening and, and you can understand uh, who is, uh, and, and obviously, you know, these tickets will be open in service now, so you can track there. And uh, it's a pretty neat feature. Obviously I was not able to show you the complete demo because of limited capability and integrations, but but I'm sure, I hope you get the idea of what uh, Core Root can do and, and how powerful it is as far as uh, provisioning is concerned. So this is one of the major use cases that they have. Um, all um, the Microsoft Teams auto provisioning, they have they have rebranded it to Auto now, uh, which 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 is there as a service. Uh, uh, if I can click on connector service. All the auto provisioning is here, and all the carrier related work is here and called out. So, there is a recent update on that uh, rebranding. Now, I think, um, as far as I was, as far as number management is concerned, I think I've covered this a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the, and this is one of the biggest use cases that called out has is, you know, it, the different, they have different features like. You can, uh, like I said, automatically synchronize Microsoft and operator connect numbers from teams and group them into ranges by type, area, carrier. You can add your direct routing ranges via the call route portal, automatically synchronize phone number assignments directly from teams to call route, classify numbers into subgroups, identify numbers easily by type, uh, assign num users a phone number directly from call route portal without scripting required. You don't need to know PowerShell script. You don't have to log into PowerShell to do anything. It invites uh, human errors and all sorts of things. I don't have to maintain those scripts in Notepad or some other uh, text uh, solution. I can uh, yeah, <clears throat> I can assign uh, or create user personas with custom policies and assign a phone number there, automatically assign the next fee number in a range to a user. So there are very cool features. Uh, if you're looking for good and compact solution, and these are the use cases that you're looking to, then, then I think this is the choice of the solution you should go with because it, it has global coverage in terms of carriers, in terms of uh, uh, 
um, unified communication services. It works perfectly with Microsoft Teams. It can add other PBXs like Call Manager, WebEx, and 3CX, and all those. And uh, and 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 it's pretty neat as far as if if you talk about these particular use cases. Um, so this is a quick demo. Um, you know, I wish uh, I can add more and create a better version of this demo with some data. If I'm able to do so, I will create another one and, and share with you all. Thank you. Hope uh, you've seen the product now, how it looks, some of the use cases. Obviously, I was not able to uh, depict a lot of the functionality because of limited uh, capabilities in my tenant, but I'm sure you get an idea uh, as to uh, what call root uh, can do. Uh, if you ask me, I have had a lot of experience working with automation tools and I've worked for an IT company, so I understand the IT operations uh, as well. I feel uh, uh, the call root solution is an excellent solution if you know what you're looking for. As I said, there are three primary use cases and if you're looking for that kind of solution, managing those three kind of use cases, carriers, integrating with Microsoft Teams and auto provisioning and number management, call root uh, is the solution to go for, irrespective of how small or how big your organization is. And uh, you know the licensing model is fairly simple. So so, but again, I would I would uh, if you're listening to this uh, podcast, I would suggest because call route offers um, I think 14 days um, demo tenant. So if if you want, you can uh, try it out. I will share the list of the contact persons in call route and uh, you can connect with them and get your organization registered and and get a demo tenant to see it yourself how beneficial it is for you if you think it is beneficial i would um, urge you to uh, you know uh, get the call route solution and see how it how it works for you um, so this is it for the podcast today and i would uh, as as i promised uh, i will try and see if i can add more capabilities in my call route um, tenant and show you a better demo than what I did today. Uh, but I hope you got something out of it and I'll be keep making more videos uh, like this in the future uh, on reviewing the products, creating demos so that it is helpful for you and you can make the right decision. Uh, thank you and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.